Okay, so in this lesson I want to answer a question that was asked via email, and that is, if we have a smooth bound object, how are we going to go ahead and add in influence objects in order to edit parts of this? Now, let me just start by saying that uh, influence objects can be any object. Right? They can be surfaces, they can be curves, they can be whatever you want. Um, and they just have to be added in. A smooth bind has to be added to your object first, then you can say, okay, I want this particular object to control, just like joints do, a certain amount of uh, weight on vertices on our smooth bound surface. Uh, in my case here, I have a bowl character I've been working on. He has a skeleton, uh, not bound yet, but in place. And in this case, I want to edit around the mouth. I'm going to add in some joints. Now, I'm doing this in place of blend shapes. However, you can pre-make blend shapes, then go ahead, bind your head to a skeleton and add in these influence objects and have blend shapes and influence objects working together. Or you can have just blend shapes or just influence objects. It's really up to you and how freeform you want to get with your animation. So in order to add influence objects, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go ahead and select my skeleton here. And I'll bring my bowl back and I'm going to shift select that and I'm going to go into my animation set and I'm going to say skin, bind skin, smooth bind. I now have a smooth bind with which to work with and I can just double check this really quick. Okay, I see that that smooth bind is working. And I assume I've set up everything else, I really like what's going on. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say add each of these bones out here which I've pre-placed and I've pre-named. Okay, make sure again that we're naming, in this case I have lift upper and I have left, upper, middle, and lower, right, upper, middle, and lower, and bottom. It's going to make it a lot easier when it comes time to uh, do the weighting later. I'm going to go ahead, select my first joint, select my surface, and under skin, I'm going to choose edit smooth skin, and I'm going to choose add influence. Now much like when we do our regular smooth bind, there are some options here. We could go in and change the distance of the influence and, and all our sorts of stuff, but I'm just going to go ahead and say add influence. I'm going to wind up going back in and doing all this stuff in the component editor anyway, so I might as well just go ahead and say add influence. I've now added this in as an influence object, and if I move it around, you can see that, why yes, it has a lot of influence. I'm just going to go ahead and select each of these, and I'm just hitting the G key to redo my last operation, which is add influence object. The order really doesn't matter. I'm just going to keep clicking and adding it in. And finally, my bottom one. So now I should see that each of these has lost a little bit of weight. Yeah, it looks looks okay. So now, if I want to go ahead and work on this and say, okay, I, here's how I really want this to work. First off, I'm going to turn my wireframe on shaded on, so it's going to make it a little bit easier to see. And you can see now each of these has some influence. It's the surface that I have here is uh, purple. So in order to edit this, just like we would any type of a smooth bind, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go under Window, and I'm going to go and choose General Editors, Component Editor. I'm going to scroll over up here to my smooth skins. I'll select my surface, hit F8, and then choose the vertices that I'm interested in. Make sure I don't choose ones I'm not interested in. And I can see that up here, lip bottom, lip uh, lower right, middle left, everything here has some type of influence. So now I can go ahead and say, okay, you know, my lip upper maybe will have 0.75% uh, control over here. And as always, it's probably very smart for us to go ahead and set an animation key, move forward a little bit, move it up where we think our extreme is going to be, set another key, so this way we can watch it over time and that'll help us with our weighting. So I may want to go ahead and grab all of these ones up here and make sure that the upper lip has no control, let's say. Well, we have to make sure that everything uh, equals out. So I'm going to go ahead, let's say for my uh, main hip, even though obviously this is not a hip, I can still go ahead and say give this thing 100% control and there we go. And of course, just go ahead and grab all of these up at the top. And for the moment, I'll go ahead and say main hip should control 100%. 
If I go ahead and do that, and now I should see that on my upper lip moves, nothing up here moves. Now, of course, in good animation, we're probably going to want to make this thing step down a bit. So I'm going to, uh, again, keeping an eye on my vertice selection. I can select my vertex right up here, and I'll say, hey, you know what? This left upper, uh, sorry, my uh, upper lip should control, let's say, 0.25 at this point. And I'm also going to go ahead and turn on my uh, turn off hide zero columns. And I'll say uh, my main, where a main hip should control 0.25. Now notice how this is going to keep going back and forth. Like we talked about with smooth bind before, if I turn my holding on, I can now come in here, 0.5. Maybe I'll say actually that this is controlling uh, 0.1, let's say. And I'll turn my hold on on that. I'll turn my hold off on the main hip. And I'll say this should control 0.9. We're now going to start to get a better gradation. And I can do the same thing by coming out here. I'll click on this one. And I'll say, uh, let's turn hold uh, off on here. And I'll say this should control 100%. This will help me step it down a lot easier. So instead, if that one's controlling 0.9, I'll say this one should control 0.75. Now we're going to get something again. It's going to look a lot nicer. Maybe I'll grab this one here and say that this should be 100% uh, on lip upper again, and then main hip. I'll say uh, this should can be controlled uh, 0.1. So now everything is kind of stepping down a little, little nicely. Maybe up here I'll change this one from a 0 0.9. I'll we'll give this one 0.2. So you should see a pretty nice step down over time. And of course, you do have to go in and mess with this. So lip upper up here, I think I did this a little bit backwards. This one should be a 0 0.75, 0 0.25. There you go, now it'll start to degrade a little bit nicer. So let's make this one um, over here. If that was 0 0.75, then let's say over here, main hip is gonna control 0.5. So now half of it. So it's going to help us get some nice little wrinklage. Um, it's not going to make it look like, okay, this controls everything all at once and then nothing all at once. And that's pretty much influence objects. They work the same as any other smooth skin. And again, it can be any object you want. It can be curves. It can be uh, other surfaces. It can be locators. In this case, I just choose to use joints. Once you're ready to actually have this move along, because grabbing here, and then moving it around is going to leave those behind. See the tutorial on how we go ahead and add things into a skeleton without actually parenting them to a skeleton in order to see how you can get these things to move along but not be considered part of the regular joint hierarchy.